that are across over our committee is that school eight is under one big umbrella and that you have to veto the entire school eight formula if you wanted to. Well, I don't want to get in the details uh, of, 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 of those kind of things. I, I instead am interested in working things out with Senator Brownstall and with also the Republicans in the House of Representatives. As far as that goes, also with the Republicans in the Senate and the Democrats in the House. I think all of them are elected by the people. I think we all have an obligation and a responsibility. And school aid is one of the biggest items in the budget. And we need to do that in a responsible way. I was very critical of the way it was mismanaged the last two years. The massive across the board cut. And then underfunding uh, the, you know, giving school districts uh, 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 the spending authority, but then not providing the state money, the state share of the money. Those are the kind of things I promised we would not do. And in the budget we presented, we don't do that. An official from the Iowa Association of School Boards last week said that if, if your approach to zero allowable growth in, in the preschool would result in her words, F, uh, layoffs of epic proportions. Uh, I don't think it's anything like the 10% across the board cut they experienced two years ago. What we have offered is something that offers stability and predictability so that they know what the budget will be. And it is an austere budget. And I would remind you that revenue is still below where it was two years ago. It's a little higher than it was last year. But uh, we inherited a financial mess that we're committed to straightening out. We also had all this one-time money used for various programs, including Medicaid, that we've had the obligation and responsibility to get back on track, and we are spending less than we're taking in each year. And we put together a budget that I think is very responsible considering the financial circumstances that the state is facing and the financial mess that we inherited. It sounds like you're saying there will be layoffs. It just won't be anything like the 10% that happened before. Well, it, it depends upon the school district and their situation. So I guess but what, what I'm saying is there will be stability and predictability in funding. In other words, the state is not going to promise one level and then dramatically reduce the amount of money that they receive. So the state will meet its obligations, which it has not done for the last two years. We intend to meet our obligations. What I'm trying to get people to think realistically and, and, and say, okay, this is what uh, we can expect, and so they can uh, go forward based on stability and predictability. And, and that's also the way we try to uh, put together the, the preschool program saying that uh, we want to provide school preschool opportunities for everybody. We know the state can't afford to embark on an expensive new entitlement program, but here's a way that we can approach it that provides financial need to the families that have it. And those that can afford to pay it, that have been paying for it in the past, can, uh, will pay for the preschools, and then the ones that do have financial need uh, will get assistance uh, based on their level of, uh, of need. So given that you proposed this scholarship program for preschool, are you feeling confident that the current state-funded preschool program is no longer going to exist, even if the Senate is saying no now? Well, I guess what I'm saying is I want to put together something that has stability and predictability. They started the preschool program, then they did this massive across-the-board cut that led to all of the disruption and layoffs. I don't want to have that. I want to make sure that what we promise we will do, we do. And the program we put together, I feel confident we can fund and we will meet the state's obligations to. But the history of, uh, of ever since the preschool program started is you had been given with one hand and taken away with another. We need to stop that kind of false budgeting and do things in a way that's fair and even-handed. And so we've said we understand it's an austere budget. We understand there's not a, a lot of additional money. But the state's going to meet its obligations, but it's not, which it's not been doing. Is this kind of budgeting fair to the public, whereby schools have little time to make adjustments in budgets and make snap decisions, which the public has no opportunity to weigh in on, uh, because the decisions are having to be made at the end? Well, first of all, let me just say, you know, we inherited a real mess. No decision was made on allowable growth last year. The legislature purposely underfunded the school aid formula, and the year before they did a massive cross-the-board cut. So people need to know the context. And we came into office with a commitment to restore stability and predictability 
in putting together a budget that is sustainable for the long term. And that's what we've presented. Now, we have a legislature that's split. Uh, the party that controlled the legislature for the last many years still controls the Senate. They may not want to change. You got people in the House of Representatives that have some ideas on their own. But I was elected governor of the state, and I feel an obligation and a responsibility to provide stability and predictability. And that's why I said at the end of the day, I would encourage schools to look at the governor's recommendations and assume that at the end of the day, we'll end up somewhere close to that. I am not sure that's exactly where it's going to end up. And I do respect and recognize the legislative process and the prerogative of the leadership in both houses to take their own positions. But at the end of the day, we all need to agree. We're any law to pass that meets a constitutional majority in the House, a constitutional majority in the Senate, and the governor's signature. It sounds like your advice to school districts is essentially plan for zero allowable growth right. and your approach to preschool. And then they won't get cut. The if I were a superintendent, that's what I would do. So more feathery type uh, topic. Do either of you plan to see who's on company later this year? <laughs> Personally? <laughs> Well, I just say my son Marcus is excited about that opportunity, but uh, uh, this is an issue that's been a long time coming. Uh, we are uh, the only state left in our region that didn't permit dove honey. Uh, doves don't live very long, and I understand there's this emotional issue. People have strong feelings on both sides of the issue, but uh, I certainly believe that uh, the DNR Commission will set a reasonable season and, and uh, hunters that have been waiting for this opportunity for a long time will get this opportunity. What do you say to folks that say that you've screwed your commitment to open government um, by signing this and being debated in both houses and then being signed within you know, 72 hours? Well, I think the whole process was was very open process and, and I think everybody's known this has been around forever. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was on the committee that brought it out. 1973, and that's resources coming out. We've been debating it, it's been discussed and back and forth and forever and ever and ever. So I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that this issue had the potential uh, uh, to be passed, and I've been on record for it since 1973.